And joining us via Skype now is a reputation manager to Boston Akeju to discuss further on this. Good, mo good afternoon, rather, Mr. Akeju. Good afternoon, and thank you for having me. Now, what's your assessment of our next new policy framework for conducting elections in the context of COVID-19 pandemic? Um, while we're still waiting for the final draft that um, INEC has promised to release on uh, Monday, um, I, I, I'm hoping that it, there will be a lot of um, use of technology. I understand that INEC is in a difficult position, but what we have now can be likened to a state of emergency. Um, nobody planned for COVID-19 and it has disrupted life as we know it. And election is not, you know, an exception to that. Um, because I'm also wondering how social distancing and um, a lot of things will be practiced during the election, um, if, if, as INEC has even decided, you know, uh, to go on it. I'm not entirely confident or sure that it's the best step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Which brings me to my next question. Many of us are wondering, should this election be held uh, during this pandemic, really? I mean, from my point of view, I think it would have been very, very expedient to um, consider the use of technology a lot in this type of election, um, if it must, you know, happen. Um, there are other parts of election uh, that we cannot, um, of the election process that we will not be able to um, bring to the fore in this uh, period, um, the international observance, you know, um, even voter apathy, to be very sincere, uh, even when we didn't have situations like this, uh, there was voter apathy. Uh, the enemy we fight today, coronavirus, is one that we can't see. So how many people will come out of their houses or their homes to go and vote as we continue to fight, you know, coronavirus at a time like this? While we understand that, you know, this election is still further in the year, around September, um, I'm hoping that, you know, um, the problem of the, the pandemic would have been resolved to a reasonable extent and we'll have the confidence to do that. But if that doesn't happen, then um, it will not be the appropriate time to have an election. And I just hope that the document that INEC is going to release on Monday uh, would factor in any eventuality. Um, now, clearly, Nigerians are still adjusting with uh, dif some difficulty to the new changes. And there is likely going to be an increased level of voter apathy, as you have also mentioned. In your opinion, how can INEC address this, which is really, really crucial? I mean, like I've always said, um, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not one to um, overflow the problem. If INEC insists on, you know, going on with it, it's very, very important uh, to educate the voters and, you know, give them that sense of assurance that there will be a lot of decorum, uh, social distancing will be maintained, there will be a lot of hygiene measures at the polling unit and, at the, you know, and all of that. Um, you know, everybody involved will have to follow a rigorous process of, um, of, of hygiene and all of that uh, during that. We do insist on going on with it. Uh, but on the optimistic side of things, um, there, there are situations that maybe by that time, We'll have a regime of treatment for coronavirus and will not be as scared as we are now. Uh, and then, you know, uh, things will be a, a lot lighter. But whatever happens, INEC will have to immediately start a lot of orientation campaign to let people know that, you know, this is what they've put in place to, um, um, to, keep, to keep people safe um, even as they go to the polls. Mm -hmm. If they insist on going. I would advise they don't, but, you know, um, the ball is really in their courts you know, to, to, go, to go ahead. I share in your hope that, you know, maybe by that time we would have moved forward from COVID-19. Let's take the conversation a bit more for, you know, uh, take it away from uh, this. While we are preparing for elections, uh, some global leaders, including the former president of Nigeria, good luck, Jonathan, have alerted the world that democracy is at risk globally because of, you know, the pandemic. What's your take on this? Um, I think I think he is right that um, democracy is at risk, but there are loads of other things that are at risk. Uh, everything, almost everything, has, you know, is at risk because nobody, you know, really prepared for this global pandemic. And um, the risk we see here is um, 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 a situation where 
um, unruly elements or very selfish leaders or people can take advantage of, you know, uh, the gap that this uh, the, uh, the, this this pandemic has created, and that's what you've seen in what they are saying that some countries have postponed election. Um, not too many constitutional or electioneering process has um, a room uh, for this type of situation. So there is no legal framework to to navigate, you know, um, this this new um, um, situation. So uh, it's true that democracy is at risk. But I think that more than just, you know, raising the alarm, it is important for us to start to advise on what has to be done. Um, is you, do we have to create um, um, election policies and processes that factor in situations like this that are within the control, you know, um, of, 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 of the, the systems that we have in place? So um, that's what I see uh, with regards to that. And I don't think that we should further create any panic. Rather, I think global leaders should work um, and advise countries on how they can create framework and systems and policies and processes that can help, you know, um, to accommodate this our new world. Reputation Manager Tsubosun Akejo, thank you very much for your contributions. Stay safe out there. Thank you for having me.